We may have buried the lead there. We did reach out to several of the major money transfer organizations. In a statement to CBS News, MoneyGram said, and I do quote, uh, we remain committed to ensuring our customers can continue to stay connected to family and friends around the globe through our quality financial services. End quote. Here to discuss this and a whole lot more, it is an all-star panel to be sure. CBS, CBSN political contributor, Republican strategist Leslie Sanchez, also CBSN political contributor, and Democratic strategist Linda Tran, also a founding partner of 270 Strategies. Now, before we start, we should once again disclose that several employees at 270 Strategies do some work for the Hillary Clinton campaign. However, Linda does not. We're going to get that into an asterisk, Linda, because uh, we, uh, so we're out of time. It's really great having you. Uh, no, uh, lots to get to here, but let's start, Leslie, with the wall. Yeah. Um, no sense on this three-day plan if it's a literal thing or if this is sort of an allegory. Uh, we saw President Obama yeah. respond yesterday. We didn't see him actually call it a wacky plan and a half-baked notion. That was how very is, kind. That how is this kind. playing, particularly with... Hispanic voters. Just like a great telenovela, uh, like a lot of twists and turns. Go. It's yes, fabulous. Thank you, you so go. much. Yes. There is no one would really believe this is true. And only in television can you say I'll have a wall like in all the components of how we're going to pay for it in three days, because that's about as nonsensical as, as this approach is right now. Like, And I like the idea that, that Donald Trump is, and, and it was great to show the disparity in terms of the cost, yeah. because you build a 10 foot wall, you know, the Mexicans will build an 11 foot fence and that, and it, or, or a ladder, sorry, just to kind of put it in context it's not it doesn't make a lot of sense because one there are already multiple walls there is already a continuous wall in many parts but it has many gaps which are natural terrains mountainous terrains that make it extremely difficult for people to cross and it's really the human trafficking element so there's two concerns the human trafficking as well as the narco trafficking and all the drugs going back and forth I think what the Mexicans want to see as well as a lot of the folks on the frontera the people along the border is a common sense solution that allows for legal migration Mm -hmm. of both goods and services and human labor capital uh, at, at, at the appropriate times when businesses need them. And that has been such a dysfunctional system for over 15 years, probably going on two decades. That's why there's frustration. But to have these kind of broad approaches really is not uh, fair to the people who live on the border, and it's certainly not fair to the people that want a solution. It also, as we spent 24 hours to a degree, for both of you parsing the legality here uh, or perhaps lack thereof. It also, in terms of strategy, would seem that the time we spent at least talking about the wall again yesterday may have been time we didn't spend talking about what would become a pretty sound defeat for Donald Trump in Wisconsin. What do you what do you make of the strategy perhaps? Yeah, I here? mean honestly I don't think that the Trump campaign really does most things um, by accident. I mean in this past week he had a rough go of it but he is the master of deflection and redirection and he knew that Wisconsin was not going to be a good picture for him and so it was a smart play frankly to be talking about something he wants to talk about that's going to stir some controversy on both sides mm -hmm. but it at least allows him to kind of dominate again as we've seen over and over and over again for him to dominate the Airwaves. What, what's fascinating about it is Congress has taken up this issue of remittances for years, mm -hmm. right? And it was always at the protection of the individuals who were sending money abroad because there are many poor counties, there's a lot of migration that comes from Mexico and other countries actually into the United States, but they're very wealthy cities that are left behind and people do tend to go back to them now that they can afford homes and housing. It's this natural flow back and forth across the U.S.-Mexico border. You know, Michoacan, for example, gets $603 million a year. You know, Jalisco, Guadalajara, uh, uh, Guanajuato, the massive amounts of money that go into these states that really propel Mexico. So Donald Trump is correct. There is a significant pain point when you talk about those dollars. But Congress looked at how can we make sure there's not a lot of predatory uh, lending or predatory costs to increase spikes in costs for the people that are trying to send $200 and have to pay 200%. I mean, it just didn't make sense. We used to be on the side of the individual <laughs> as opposed to these banks and some of these other areas. So I think we're looking at the whole thing through the wrong lens. Perhaps then we find the right lens as Donald Trump looks to get well here uh, in his home state of New York in a couple of weeks. I want to turn to the Democrats now. Bernie Sanders on a roll. Uh, six of the last seven contests. He actually invoked this however vague notion of momentum at the very open of his uh, victory speech last night. How concerned should the Clinton campaign be, if nothing else, even with the overall delegate lead, that perhaps this state of New York won't be the firewall that they thought it might be. 
Well, I think that there are two things that you need to consider here. So one is it's always a numbers game, and she's clearly ahead on that front, but it's also an optics game. And so what we saw from Bernie Sanders last night is him putting forth this framework for people to see what New York might look like. So if she doesn't have a blowout victory in New York, he's going to say, see, you know what, we were the underdog here, but we're coming back and we're going to get there. The reality is the math is the math, as we've talked about many times before, and the uh, gap between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton is just so huge. I mean, you talk about the pledge delegates, she's hundreds and hundreds ahead, even after his victory last night. You talk about the super delegates, and it's almost insurmountable, as the campaign itself has said. Um, um, so for Bernie, you know, he's got to figure out a way to actually flip so many super delegates in order for him to be the nominee. It's very, very unlikely. And, you know, it's, it's why it's not surprising, actually, that the um, team, the Bernie Sanders team, actually had this extensive interview with The New York Times where they're essentially throwing in the towel. I mean, these are people who understand how all of this works, how the calculus works. That said... Bernie Sanders outraised Hillary Clinton by $15 million mm -hmm. in March. And so this guy's going nowhere. He's going to continue to grab the microphone. He's going to continue to stump about income inequality and all of these other things. It's interesting. She mentions this New York Times piece where even the candidate himself uh, apparently didn't really believe in his campaign, or at least a real <laughs> realistic shot at victory. He certainly didn't seem to believe that he would be where he is right now. And advisors around him thought, boy, if he maybe approach this differently at the beginning, it might even be more pronounced right now. Interesting, Leslie, there's a story on Politico today. The headline really perhaps tells the whole story. Hillary Clinton is tired of Bernie Sanders. <laughs> We're seeing a bit of a change here in the tenor and the tone of this campaign, yes? Sure. Uh, you know, for the people that wanted to fight against the natural the natural coronation of Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. and like she thought she would have in 2008, they are extremely frustrated. He's certainly, it's certainly an irritating point. She's losing her temper a little bit more. And of course, she's tired of having to deal with this and would rather focus on the general. But that's not the way the populace wants to, 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 to take this right now. And I think going into New York, there's a mixed review of her record. She had promised 200,000 new jobs in upstate New York, and then they had a decrease in jobs. There's a lot of people that are very frustrated. She said she would use her political prowess and her focus as former first lady to really bring economic viability to the state in very economically depressed areas, and she didn't do that. So what is the truth? I think that's creating opportunity to feel the burn in New York, and that momentum will continue. It also sets up what could potentially be a rather fiery debate for these two <laughs> five days prior to that Absolutely. primary on the 19th. Leslie, Linda, with the asterisk, we appreciate the doctor. <laughs> Thank you.